Huh. Interesting. Oh, hey, sons. Man, I can't believe we lost. Oh, hey, Dad. Hey. Hey, Dad. <sighs> huh. Hey, uh, Dad. What does that mean? Yeah, what does it mean? Yeah, what does it mean? Wow. I'm sorry to hear that, guys. I really am. But... You gotta understand that... Jesus... Shines on our darkness. Oh, uh, hey! Wait. Larry, Morton, what's wrong? <sighs> well... Me and Morton and... Other of our friends, we were playing basketball, right? Well, we're in a team and all of that, but like... We lost. And it was the last game, too, and we lost. Man, I was really hoping we'll win, but we just... We... We lost. Yeah, and I got pushed. And you know what, what the coach did? He did nothing. I got pushed. And no one did nothing. <laughs> well... It means that every dark time that we go through, Jesus will be our light. Which means, like, He's our hope. There's always hope and light. And so, He's our light, our hope, our Savior, our Lord. He's our light. Okay, so, every dark time that we go through, he'll always be there with us? Well, yeah. Wow, interesting. Very interesting. Thanks, Dad, for uh, helping us and just, you know, just letting us hear that. I really need to hear that. No problem, son. Hey, Morton. Yeah? You wanna play one round of, on basketball? One on one? Yeah! Alright, let's go. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> no problem. Remember that Jesus always shines in our darkness. Always remember that. <laughs> John chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was in elementary school, there was a talent show that I decided to try out for. I don't remember the exact year that I tried out, but I knew that I wanted to sing one of my favorite gospel songs. It's a song by the Happy Goodmans titled The Lighthouse. I was prepared and ready to sing the song. And the lyrics go a little something like this. There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, it sends out a light that I might see, and the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead me home. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, my ship would sail no more. Everybody that lives around us says, tear that old lighthouse down. 
You know, the big ships, they don't sail this way anymore. There just ain't no use of it standing round. But then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time I saw the light. Oh, the light from that old lighthouse that stands up there on a hill. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my light to him. Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the rocks of sin, he has shown his light around me so that I could clearly see. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, where would this ship be? Turns out, when I got up on stage, I froze. I panicked and at best I mumbled the words where no one could hear me. So needless to say, I did not win the talent show. But nevertheless, that song has been meaningful to me throughout my life. It has encouraged me to remember that no matter what storms in this life may come, the light that is Jesus Christ shines in the darkness. He shines in the midst of the storms. Just think for a moment. What is the purpose of a lighthouse? According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, lighthouses can be located on rocky cliffs or sandy shoals. They can be located at the entrances to harbors and bays and can either serve the purpose of warning ships to stay away from rocky coasts or guide them in and out of harbors safely. The light that shines from these lighthouses are used to guide ships to avoid danger or come to safety. If we think of that song, we can imagine why a lighthouse might be a helpful metaphor to understanding how Jesus guides us and is there for us in our daily lives. What this passage in scripture should remind us is that Jesus shines in our darkness and that we should shine in the darkness of others. As we begin our journey through these verses that Paige read earlier, we begin with the opening verse in John's gospel that introduces us to Jesus being the light that shines in the darkness. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, the words, in the beginning, echo the opening line of scripture from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth. The Word here in John chapter 1, existed and was with God before all of creation. From the beginning was the Word, and that Word was with God, was close to God, and that Word was God. Verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. So the Word has always been, has always been close to God, and has always been God. If you look later on in the chapter in verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and lived among us. So we know that the Word here is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has always been and always will be. Verse 3 says, All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. This reinforces that Jesus did not begin to exist. He has always existed. He always is and always will be. So whatever happens in our lives and in the world around us, whatever ups and downs we face, one thing remains constant, and that is Jesus Christ, who has been, who is, and who always will be. So the Word, which is Jesus Christ, became flesh and dwelt among us. And in Christ Jesus, verse 4 tells us, was life. And the life was the light of all people. And in verse 5, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. So here we see that Jesus Christ, who was, who is, and who always will be, is the light of all people. He is a light that no amount of darkness can ever overcome. And his light is eternal. His light has always been and always will be. And this should encourage us, no matter 
what we face in this world. Brothers and sisters, whatever darkness may exist in your life or in the world around us, know that this darkness cannot overcome Christ. This darkness cannot overcome the love he has for us, the love he has for each one of you. The light of Jesus shines in the darkness. You see, in the midst of darkness, God shows us time and time again that God's light will guide us. God's light will safely lead us through the darkness. In Exodus, as God was leading the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage, God shined in the darkness. Exodus 13, 21 says, The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way, and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light, so that they may travel by day and by night. Just as God's light guided the Israelites when it was dark, God's light leads us out of darkness, a darkness that can never overcome God. When there is darkness, God shines. Going back to the beginning of Genesis, Scripture tells us, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, and a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. When darkness covered the face of the deep, God said, let there be light. Let there be light. From the beginning of creation, God overcomes darkness. By God's power, by just simply speaking light into existence amidst the situation of darkness, darkness is overcome. God shines in the darkness. The light is there to bring us through whatever darkness we face. Psalm, 10, Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. His light guides us. In the New Testament, Jesus says in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus calls on us today to trust in him, to trust in the light. He is that light. Even though we will face difficult circumstances, even though we will face dark things in our life, the light that is Jesus is with us, guiding us every step of the way. When we follow him, we will have the light of life. And going back to our passage in John 1, this light shines in the darkness, and darkness can never overcome it. Jesus is more powerful than any darkness we face. I hope this encourages you today, as it encourages me. Jesus shines in our darkness. So, what darkness do you face today? Is it sickness, depression, grief, loneliness, anxiety, a lost job, a lost pet, a lost loved one, a broken relationship, a failed test or exam? Whatever it is, whatever darkness you are facing, I hope this message brings you comfort. I hope you are reminded, and I myself need this reminder every single day, that Jesus shines in our darkness, and this darkness we are facing can never, ever, ever in a million years overcome the love Jesus has for us. I'm not saying we won't face challenges, because we will. I myself have faced so much darkness in my life, and I know many of you have as well. But in that darkness, we have hope in Christ Jesus, a light that shines in the darkness. In her life that spanned from 1863 to 1961, Helen Howarth Lamell, the daughter of a Methodist pastor, wrote over 500 hymns and poems. 
including many songs for children. She studied voice and gave concerts in churches throughout the United States. Eventually, Helen was diagnosed with a condition that would cause her to become blind, and she was later abandoned by her husband, who couldn't handle her being blind. In 1918, a friend of hers gave her a tract, which read in part, So then turn your eyes upon him, look full into his face, and you will find that the things of earth will acquire a strange new dimness. It was this tract that inspired her to write one of my all-time favorite hymns. O oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We will face trials and hardships in this life. There will be dark times, but when we face the darkness, may, be, wait, may we be reminded that the light shines. May we be reminded to turn our eyes upon Jesus and look in his wonderful face. Because the things of this earth, the trials, the hardships, will grow strangely dim. They will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Sisters and brothers, the light still shines in the darkness. Jesus shines in the darkness, and darkness cannot overcome Jesus Christ and the amazing, unfailing love he has for us. Jesus shines in the darkness. And as this passage reminds us, the darkness cannot overcome him. So as we are encouraged and as we remember that Jesus shines in the darkness, may we also be reminded as believers in Christ to be ambassadors of the light. We continue our journey through these verses and pick up with verses six through nine, which says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. John's purpose here was to testify to the light, to be a witness to the light, to tell others about the light. He was not the light. We've established that Jesus is the light. But John here is a faithful witness to the light. He invites others to know of the light that is Jesus. Just as John testified to the light, we too are called to testify to the light. As ambassadors of the light, as followers of Jesus Christ, who is the light, we are called to shine our light for others to see. We are called to be a light in the darkness. As part of his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel, in Matthew 5, Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Jesus tells us, not to put it under a bowl, not to hide the light and keep it to ourselves, but to put it on a stand so that others may see the light. So as the old children's song goes, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. The question we might ask ourselves is how do we let it shine? How do we shine in the darkness as ambassadors of the light? Because that's what we're called to do here. 
We are called to testify as ambassadors to the light. We testify to the light when we sh- and we shine in the darkness by loving our neighbor, by caring for others so that they may see that Jesus shines in their darkness just as he shines in our darkness. In our world, we see so much darkness. We see poverty, war, violence, the ongoing threat of white supremacy and discrimination, the dehumanization of others. We see sickness as, such as cancer and Alzheimer's affect people all over the world, including those we care so deeply about. And of course, this pandemic has taken its toll on so many throughout our country and throughout our world. So how do we be a light in the darkness? We serve as a light in the darkness when we care for and advocate for the poor, the homeless, the immigrant, the asylum seeker, the refugee, victims of hatred and violence. We shine our light when we advocate for racial healing and justice. We shine our light when we uplift those who are hurting or sick, those who are battling depression and anxiety. We testify to the light that is Jesus Christ when we acknowledge the mental health needs of others. We serve as witnesses to the light when we encourage one another, when we pray for one another, when we remind them that they are not alone in this world. When I think of people in my life, who have been a light in the darkness of others, first and foremost, I think of my dad. In the last six years or so of his life here on earth, dad battled colon cancer. He had every reason to become cynical and lose his faith and trust in God. And yet, he always challenged me to trust in God and to advocate on behalf of others. When others experienced darkness in their lives, dad was there to listen, to offer encouragement, and to brighten someone's day with a joke, a pun, or a smile. He loved working in special education. I would hear stories of the kids he worked with, those he went above and beyond to meet their needs. So many stories where I felt as though I knew many of them, even though I didn't actually meet them in person. And I still hear from his former coworkers and high school students he mentored about how he would always make their day better just by simply being there. I remember when I would take him for chemotherapy and radiation treatments, and he would always make it a priority to encourage others around him and let them know that they are not alone. Whether it was another patient or a healthcare worker, he would always have a smile, a joke, or a kind word of encouragement. He embodied what it meant to be a light in the darkness experienced by others. So how can we be a light that shines in the darkness? We can do so by being present, whether that's physical presence or the use of a phone call or a Zoom chat. We can be a light when we listen to, when we acknowledge the pain and the frustration felt by others. We can be a light when we offer up a kind word or just a smile. We can be a light when we encourage those around us, such as lifting our friends up when they lose a basketball game, as you saw in Isaac's skit. We can be a light by being present in the lives of those around us. I want to emphasize that thought about being present because that's how we can shine the light that is Jesus Christ in the darkness. Years ago, when I began blogging, Dad wanted to be a guest blogger. He wrote a blog that we never got around to publishing until after his death at the end of 2019. Shortly after, I shared it publicly. It was a blog that he simply titled, Be There. Here are a few excerpts. Seeing others, seeing ourselves and others like God does, I believe is the greatest gift we can give to each other. You truly never know what someone else's journey holds 
and the hardships they have endured in their daily walk. I hope I encourage someone to be there for someone. There's always someone worse off and needs to be lifted up and sometimes even carried. We can lift others up by encouraging words and sometimes just a smile. Please continue to pray for those that fight or have lost someone. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Amen. We serve a God who from the beginning of time has overcome darkness. We can find joy in knowing that out of God's amazing love for us, God shines in her darkness. As scripture reminds us time and time again, God will never leave nor forsake us. Just as a bear watches over her cubs, so too does God watch over us. God has given us a light that shines in the darkness. The light that shines is one that no amount of darkness can ever overcome. Nothing can defeat the light that is Jesus Christ, a Savior who defeated death, ascended into heaven, and promised to return for us again someday. The Holy Spirit guides us, gives us comfort, reminds us that we are not alone no matter what darkness we face. Jesus shines in our darkness, and he calls on us to shine in the darkness of others. So how can we be a light that shines in the darkness? As Dad said, by lifting others up with encouraging words and smiles, by being there. So I encourage you throughout this week, throughout this month, to find ways to just simply be present in the lives of others. Think of a friend and text that friend some encouragement or ask someone to grab some coffee or tea and have a conversation. Let them know that you care for them. Jesus shines in our darkness. The darkness can never overcome him. As we are encouraged with the reminder that the light shines, Jesus shines, may we encourage others so that they can see the light in the darkness. Jesus is the lighthouse and from the rocks of sin he has shown the light around me so that I could clearly see if it wasn't for the lighthouse, where would this ship be? Just as a lighthouse guides ships by shining its light, so too does Jesus shine his light so that we may see in the darkness, a darkness he has overcome. Praise be to God. I thank you for tuning in and watching this sermon today on YouTube. I want to close this video with a benedictory prayer that I hope encourages you. Lord God, you have called us to be a light to the nations, to shine in the midst of the darkness, to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly, to care for the widow, the fatherless, the sojourner, and the poor, to comfort the afflicted in the same way you comfort us. May we shine our light before others so that they may see you. For you walk with us in our darkest valleys. You are near to us when we are brokenhearted and crushed in spirit. You rejoice over us with gladness. For you created us fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. Be with us today and remind us that nothing can separate us from your love as we give you our honor and praise. Amen. Thank you.